What's up, Nick fans? All right. I am Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, I receive from Poland, man, another country from Europe in this channel. So, so great. Welcome. Welcome to the Nick Fans Brazil channel and well, what's up, Victor? Uh, let me say, let me try to say something in, in, in Portuguese. Hola, meu nix irmo. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> was great, bro. bro was great. <laughs> Welcome. We, uh, a great honor. Great honor receiving oh. nah, you in this channel. Stop. I'm, I'm not so big like you. You had better guests than me. <laughs> Whoa, bro. I, I saw your face in so many interviews. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm happy to collaborate with, with everyone, mostly on NBK, but I join you know, plenty of podcasts whenever I'm, I have free time. So I'm happy to hop in and, and join and talk next. Oh, first of all, Andy, uh, do you can introduce yourself for Brazilians? Uh, yeah, so uh, like you said before, uh, currently I live in Poland. I'm a panel member on Not and But Nicks with Simeon Russell uh, and the rest of the crew. There, there's so many of us. I'm not gonna list uh, every each and all, every one of us. Uh, lately, I started to do separate shows, not also on Not and But Nicks channel, uh, but I'm gonna do more kind of European content because I feel like European uh maybe not your all european people but they're they're shy and i didn't see many good quality shows so i'm gonna be happy you know to to get those guys uh on on the panels like you did with daniel where he's also my friend so so that that's why i you know did a direct message you uh when i saw daniel on the show so <laughs> <laughs> i hope you make it uh three nah, we, yeah we, we, we can do a... we can do and we got plenty of guys here in europe just uh, i just want to get them less camera shy i was camera yes. shy at the beginning so but you know after you do a couple of shows you're, you're cool with it so <laughs> great bro great um i i am curious okay um how we start now nah, your passion uh with the knicks with the basketball do you can talk for us yeah so Vic, i don't know victor how much time we have uh, but i'm gonna try to make it fast <laughs> <laughs> listen don't so worry, uh, bro. yeah f first of all I, I was born in new york so uh that was like my first step but when i was like six seven years old my parents moved back to poland so i was a little you know child right and living there uh i you know when you're six years old, you, you don't remember, you don't have that passion, that interest yet, right? But I remember first thing we came to Poland uh, and I went to like the first grade of school and uh, the, the teacher uh, in the gym class started to, you know, say, we're going to play basketball. And, the you know, she tried to make a practice and, you know, and the guy was like dribbling straight up and I was poking the balls, you know, on the sides always. With, like on the defense, I was taking everybody's ball. But when Whoa. my time came on offense, I just turned around and, you know, went backwards so, so they couldn't take the ball from me. And the funny uh -huh. fact is, oh, she stopped the gym and she said, like, this guy did it perfect. You always should do it like him. And I was like, oh, man, I can be really good at basketball. So <laughs> I was like, you know, that, that was my basketball start. And, you know, when you like we talk back backstage, um, you know, when you started to play video games, no, there wasn't any Poland teams and nothing like that. So we played NBA Live or whatever. And, you know, first team that came out of mind is going to be my city team. So I picked the Knicks. My brother had to play with the Nets because that was the other team. And we never wanted to play with the Knicks, you know, like two Knicks <laughs> versus Knicks. So he had to pick yeah. someone else. <laughs> <laughs> the, and listen, mostly, I, 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 man, I'm, I almost become Bulls fans, bro. A little. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. That would be bad. Sorry. That would be bad. <laughs> that continue, would be bad. continue. <laughs> yeah, and listen, and and that that was the thing. Uh, and I when I found you know like the videotapes in Poland, they showed like one game a week from the NBA in those times. So so it was really hard to watch those games. But I remember I recorded them on the videotapes, the VHS tapes, 
and I watched them, you know, for a couple of times, or I called my, you know, cousin in the States. So he recorded it. He sent the videotape to Poland. I tried to watch it. It was the wrong system. He had to send a video recorder to Poland so I could watch the tapes. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, so then I watched the games. I, I watched, of course, the Knicks games. And listen, that that was, you know, all she wrote, like they say. Uh, I, I became a huge Knicks fan. I, I didn't have a choice, basically. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I agree, bro. <laughs> Uh, man, uh, I talked né, with you in backstage about uh, histories in New York, Madison Square Garden. Né? Uh, do you can tell for us uh, so many histories uh, about you and uh, with the Knicks? Yeah, so listen, every year uh, I'm always waiting. You know, Knicks fans have the season opener. They have the Christmas game, the Martin Luther King's Day game um, and, and draft day, whatever. For me, the most important day, maybe not the most important, but I the day that I really care about, it's when the schedule comes out. Because I always look when the Knicks play like four or five games in Madison Square Garden in a row, like those home stands that we have. Because then I can like tr at least try that maybe I can buy a ticket for a week and have like four or five games in a row in, Man in Madison Square Garden. And that was the case, I don't know, maybe it was like 2014 uh, that, that we had Carmelo Anthony. And I remember I was on that stretch in Madison Square Garden when he played versus the, the Charlotte Bobcats when he scored the 62 points, you know, in one game. Whoa. So and and I remember on on that day I actually buyed his jersey, so I was like you know telling the stories <laughs> to Sim like listen Sim you know Melo should have paid me money for for my tickets you know whenever I was on the game he scored like so many points so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so that that was basically the only five games uh, on the Knicks that I was there that was in I think that was 2014 when he scored those 62 points games and that was a home stretch, on that trip I also because I was only like. Seven, eight, nine days, I think, in, in the states in New York. I also had a, I went to the Nets game with Toronto, and I remember that Kyle Lowry hit a buzzer beater and, and won with the Nets. And I was like, you know, I was watching the game, and I hate the Nets so much. Uh, you know, when Lowry made that shot, I was like, oh, and then was like looking around, only Nets fans. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna sit quiet here. <laughs> oh, so, great, bro. <laughs> yeah, but that, that, that was fun. Listen, that that was fun. Uh, really fun time in New York. You know, watching those games, and I think we won like four out of five of those games. So I was really happy. Ah, great, bro. I I, I I'm happy, bro. Uh, know so many things about you, bro. Yeah. And uh, I can talk with you about the New York Knicks, okay? Uh, first of all, what's your uh, expectations né, with um, Jalen Brunson and Isaiah Hartenstein? Yeah, well, uh, I think Jalen Brunson has huge shoes to fill because we basically last what 20 years we had like one good point guard i don't think you can add raymond felton as a great point guard he had a great season but listen that he wasn't a, the best point guard that, that we could have had right so i yes. think uh we could easily say that jalen brunson is going to be one of the best point guards the last 20 25 years we had and i actually expect the knicks to play way way better with him on the floor I hope the coach is not going to stay with the offense from the last season and going with the ball through Julius Randle and stuff like that because it would be, you know, a bad thing. You, you get a point guard and you don't use him, right? And I know yes. that Jalen Brunson can play off ball, but I think, you know, he's going to be our best option as the ball handler and the floor general. So I think, you know, that there's nothing better that we could have, you know, improved in this roster for, for this season. And Isaiah Hartstein, uh, I, I don't know how you feel about Mitchell Robinson because uh, for me, Mitchell Robinson, he's a great player. Uh, he has potential, but I don't see the progress that he's making year to year to be so big 
So I actually think that they're going to split the minutes like 24 minutes, 24 minutes. It's not going to be like Mitchell Robinson is going to play 35 minutes and, and Isaiah Harstein is going to play like 12, 30 minutes. So yes. I really think that that might be the case that, that they're going to split the minutes down the middle. I'm not going to say that Isaiah Harstein is going to be the starting center for the Knicks, but uh, I, I think they're going to have plenty you know uh and they actually play different right because harston can play back to the ball back to the you know hoop he can pass the ball which mitchell robinson can do but mitchell robinson probably can you know he's more athletic uh he can catch more alley-oops than hardstein so we're gonna have you know at the same position we're gonna have two totally different players depends and, and uh, from what we know tibbs he will go with the player that will make the whole team better. So if Hardstein is gonna, if you know the other four guys on the court are gonna be playing better with Hardstein, I wouldn't be surprised if Hardstein is gonna get more minutes or even the starting job. Uh, you know, I know we extended Mitchell Robinson, that so that's you know a little bit of politics there, but I think you know that's still possible that in the future we might see Hardstein play, you know, starting minutes, uh, and, and and Mitch might be coming off the bench. Man, uh, I am so excited about uh, Zaya Hartenstein uh, because né, I make it uh, another interviews. Uh, Bill Pito, uh, Alan Han, and, uh, and other guys uh, comment about uh, Zaya Hartenstein uh, can be open the floor, open yeah. the floor uh, from from these players uh, making drives. Né? Uh, Jalen Brunson loves. Né? Uh, RJ Barrett, uh, Julius Randle, uh, these guys uh, loves nah, uh, yeah. making. Yeah, they, they uh, love to cut to the hoop. So, and you know, having a great passer in the post is going to make that, you know, that route open. So, uh, and one good pass and you have a clear, you know, way to the to the basket to score. So that, that, that you know, from in theory, that, that sounds really good. We're gonna see if they're yes. gonna use that. <laughs> so <laughs> you're right. You're right. Good. Good point. Good point. In theory, is uh, yeah. will be so much interesting. But exactly. <laughs> and Jalen Branson, I, I like so much your energy. Uh, it's not a high player. Yeah. Nah? But yeah, I love your energy, bro. Your energy, Jalen Branson. Yeah, and he, uh, he has energy. he has a big heart. Listen, he was raised around the New York, you know, organization back in the day because his father was playing with the Knicks. You know, Leon Rose is his like, you know, uh, how do you call it? Uh, um, how do you call that? He he's his um, not grandfather, just uh, you know, I forgot a word. <laughs> so, don't worry. But, but, yo, don't when Brunson was baptized, that he was his father there. So, um, yeah, uh, I think I think he he knows what to expect from the Knicks organization and from the fans. So, you know, I don't think we could have found any other better point guard. You know, I'm not talking about the max players, but but in the free agency this year, I think that was probably the best choice for the Knicks. No, oh, yes, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, the the best the best option uh, we have. Uh, people talking so much about the price, but uh, good PGs now, oh, so expensive. In this yeah, league. and and then listen, in a few years, the the you know the NBA is going to sign that new TV deal, which means the salary cap is probably going to rise by you know 10, 12 you know millions a year. So these contracts around 20 million are going to look like you know 10, 12 million deals today. So it's going to be funny money. Yes, yes, I I, I agree with you, and uh, I want your opinion, eh? Uh, before the the biggest rumor in this off season, <laughs> before uh, I want your opinion about two players, okay? Uh, Julius Randle in the last season, horrible, horrible player in the last season, and uh, your attitudes, nah, uh, it's complicated, nah. Uh, I want your opinion. Uh, Julius Randle uh, can be better uh playing uh with uh, Jalen Brunson 
or not? Yeah. Uh, do you believe Julius Randle uh, return playing well with this team? <laughs> yeah. So so listen, I am willing to forget what Julius Randle did last season. Uh, but for me, it was still in the head. It was straight up mental because mm -hmm. we know that maybe he was a little bit out of shape, but that was only a little bit. And yes. the previous season when he won the most improved player, uh, you know, of the year, he was in perfect shape. And listen, sometimes when you play basketball, you know, there's going to be days when you just shoot and the ball goes in the hoop. And he had... Mm -hmm just a season like that because you know he never made those shots and that season he was making all of those shots and yes. i think knicks fans hold him you know to those expectations or even we're thinking that he's going to go even better from that point but you know it became a problem and i think it, it's only about his attitude he was still a 2010 player so uh, that's not easy to do in the nba but we saw terrible attitude from him, like you said, you know, slapping the coach's laptop, slapping the desk. He was not fighting with the with the players, but but he was, you know, like trying to move Fournier out of the way when he was trying to calm him down and stuff like that. So that's really bad. And yes, listen, I, I don't know in, in Europe. Should the Knicks fans? Exactly. Should the Knicks the, fans? Yeah, sh show the Knicks fans the thumbs down. That, that's a really bad thing. Uh, in Europe, that's unacceptable. European basketball is mostly, a, everybody knows that that's a team game. So doing anything against your team that's going to hurt your team, it's totally unacceptable. Uh, that's why I was way down on him. But listen, now we have a point guard. If he's going to accept his role, not taking the ball over or you know over the half court not trying to run the offense through him just leaving it to for Jalen brunson to do he mm -hmm. might still be a great player for with a great contract and, and i really believe that we need to give him a chance if you know if he shows something bad in the first 10 games 20 games we still mm -hmm. have the trade deadline to to deal him and that's 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 the only thing that you know Knicks fans can hope that he's gonna pan out. You you told you told now uh, about uh, trade Randall. Uh, I saw today uh, in Brazil. Uh, I hear in another channel, and uh, I I research now nah, in the internet. I search in the internet uh, a post uh, in Daily Knicks. Uh, comments about uh, Phoenix Suns uh, interest uh, interest in Julius Randle. <laughs> uh, man, I, I doubt it. I doubt. I I, I saw. Uh, uh, how's your name? Uh, John Gambaro. Gam Gam I forgot his name. Gambaro from Arizona Sports uh, Radio uh, Station yeah, Radio mm -hmm. from Arizona talks now nah, about uh, uh phoenix suns uh talk it uh, with uh, randall's agent about uh negotiation do you believe in that man i i doubt about this uh, but uh, well, nick fans will be happy so, yeah uh, <laughs> most nick fans are going to be happy with julius randall just being off the team what whoever we get back is going to be cool for them <laughs> yes uh, uh, yeah, but Victor, to be true, if you would watch one of my episodes with Josh, Uncle Fulio on NBK, we were talking about movie in the last season about moving Julius Randle, and we mentioned Phoenix and one of those you know scenarios. Yeah. Uh, uh, the problem is you know he, because you know why Phoenix? Listen, he has a great point guard in CP3. He has a shooting yes. guard in Devin Booker, which he is going to have to take a back seat with, right? The mm -hmm. you know the three Michael Bridges, he's not going to go anywhere from there because he's a key player there, not, right? Not Ken Johnson. Yeah, and, and Ken listen, Johnson, Ken Johnson, and, sorry. and the four and, and the and the four spot was Jay Crowder, mm, right? He was starting contract. four, and and yeah, and he didn't, he doesn't have a you know a long contract, a, a big contract. And at the center position, they have DeAndre Ayton. So actually, the worst player out of that starting five is the is the power forward position. He yes. Jay Crowder can't score from that position, 
And that, that was a problem for the Phoenix Suns when you would watch the playoffs and then play. So they actually, I think it really makes sense for the Suns to go for, after a guy like Julius Randle. You know, but they have to think that if he comes in, he's just going to fill a role because he's not mm -hmm. going to be scoring more than Devin Booker. He's not going to be scoring probably more even than DeAndre Ayton. But yes. he can stretch the floor a little bit. And with a point guard like CP3, he might fall in, mm -hmm. fall in line in that team. So that might be good for him and good for, for the Suns. Question is, you know, if if they're willing to risk it, you know, and, and Randall's, you know, mental situation, if it's going to pan out, if they would be sold on that. Listen, mm -hmm. a, a good trade package back, you know, maybe a, a pick for the Knicks and Jay Crowder. I would gladly take that. But what we got to remember, Crowder, Victor, bro. Crowder remember hates your Tibbs. fight? Yeah, Crowder yeah. hates Tibbs. So so that, that might be another situation why Tibbs is going to say, like, no, listen, I don't want him here. So <laughs> No, me too. Man, I remember your fight with <laughs> Alfred Payton. Yeah, you Alfred remember? Payton shoved him out of the, the, the right, the, the out of the line, uh, even after that, you know, uh, three that he tried to make versus the Knicks. So, I yeah, man, that, man, but, man, but listen, I, I, I won't for, I won't forget Alfred Payton. My eyes see yeah. this, this guy playing with the Knicks, man, man. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, so listen. Yeah. Uh, Alfred Payton was, you know, he was a character. <laughs> he was a character. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Oh, man. Uh, Where's that? Uh, Alec Burks, né? PG. I, I like our Alec Burks. Okay. I like, I like, but PG, man. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. and and Victor, what I can say about that? Uh, listen, Alec Burks is—he's a journeyman player. He's a rotation player, probably on most of the NBA teams. But he's—he's mm -hmm. he's a small forward. He's not even a shooting guard because he can't shoot. He's a small forward that can create a shot a little bit, and Tibbs used him as a point guard. So yes, and, and listen, Knicks fans were mad at Alec Burks, but I don't think that was his. You know, problem. It's not like he took the ball from the point guard and tried to play for himself. That mm -hmm. was the role that the coach wanted him to use and to play. So I, I, I'm not blaming Alec Burks, uh, no, not me to too. mention that he, that he played like 81 games, I think. So he was he was like the Iron Man for the Knicks. He played every game, I think, except one. So uh -huh. so so that was great. And and, and listen. He's not the perfect player, but like we said, he's an NBA rotation player. He just got put into a role. It's it, it's hard for a guy like you would put, uh, I don't know, Obi Toppin uh, like two years ago when he was a rookie in a starting power forward role. And, you know, all the veterans would go at him and score like 25 points each night on him. Knicks fans would hate Obi Toppin. Mm -hmm. So so th that, that's a bad you know, situation that the team and the coaching staff puts a player in and then the fan base goes at the player. So, no, I, I'm looking for from more perspectives than just, you know, what the player shows us on the court. Man, uh, Alec Burks don't have guilt. Guilt is yeah. from Tom Timbaldon. In Brazil, man, people uh, uh, hate more Tom Timbaldon. Uh, put uh, Alec Burks uh, in PG than Alec Burks playing okay yeah uh, people crazy with you uh, yeah uh tom timbaldon in brazil two hashtags <laughs> in my channel so much trade randall and fire tips. fire tips <laughs> fire tips yeah two hashtags man man so many so many so many guys comments in my videos and uh social medias nah? uh two hashtags it's complicated, bro. It's, compl it's yeah. complicated. Uh, I am. I can imagine Tom Chimba though uh, trust in Alec Burks, nah, in your experience, nah. But man, uh, Nix uh, has uh, IQ. Emmanuel Kikley, it's a uh, for uh, for me. It's a great guy, uh, a great player. Uh, can be, nah, a great future in this league with the Knicks or another team. Okay. 
but uh, tips uh, has a famous, né? Don't like so much rookies. Né? <laughs> yeah, it's complicated, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a complicated situation. Um, uh, what I can say about Tibbs, I hate his in-game adjustments. It's like I see it. I yell at the TV set, like switch this guy. Why do you run this play when we have <laughs> this guy on the court and stuff like that? And like ten possessions because it's not like two possessions later he's gonna do it. It's like the next half or the next game he's gonna adjust that. And I was calling for it, like you know, fifty points back, you know that 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 we should have scored, and that that's the thing that that I'm mostly uh, you know mad at Tom Thibodeau that that in game adjustments are really hard for him, and that that's also I think uh, you know what Victor I think uh, it's not like I'm gonna say that Tibbs is a good good coach, nothing like that, but I no, think I understand. He, Yeah, but but at least he lost Mike Woodson and Kenny Payne, which were the two biggest assistant coaches that he had. Like Mike Woodson was a former NBA coach in several teams, so mm -hmm. I think if he had a guy like Mike Woodson, Mike Woodson would tell him, "Listen, let's try to run this, or let's try to defend these plays like this." My, you know, Tom Thibodeau might be okay. Let me try it, but when Daisy Ashimoto do, does it. When he learned everything from Tom Thibodeau, you know, it's hard for Thibodeau. It's like, you know, it's like my son would tell me, listen, let's not go this way to school, just the other way around. And I was like, why? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to go the way I know it, right? And, yeah. and I told you how to go to school, which way. So how are you going to teach me something now? So I think Tom Thibodeau is, you know, a little bit, you know, older guy. And he has that old, you know, the different mentality. When he would have a guy that's also experienced, he might use him a little bit different than a Daisy Ashimoto or, or another young assistant. So I understand Tibbs a bit. I'm not explaining his decisions, though, because, you know, those in-game adjustments, you know, from the, this, the way that I see the game, terrible. <laughs> Man, in Brazil, people joking about Tom Chimbo, though. Uh, he, uh, he, call, uh, he calls uh, Penguin. Penguin. Uh, yeah. Danny DeVito, do you remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. From, I remember. With Michael Keaton. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Batman, right? <laughs> yes, people uh, tell us tell, um, uh, Tom Chimbledon look like uh, Danny DeVito, Penguin. He does. Uh, Victor, <laughs> I, I, I was thinking the first time we hired him, the first meme I, I tried to find was that Danny DeVito Penguin thing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, it's complicated. And uh, I I won't talk with you uh, about uh, uh, other player. Man, uh, this player I love so much. Okay, R. J. Barrett. Oh, I was thinking you're gonna say Evan Fournier. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. Nick's nation French. I I, I am curious about you. Uh, This uh, your opinion, Nick's Nation French. Yo, I, I was... Listen, I'm out. I'm out. Evan Fournier fan too. So <laughs> I, I, I like Evan Fournier. I can defend uh, Evan Fournier almost everything. No, so <laughs> no, but, but for Fournier, yeah, Fournier, for uh, it's a great uh, player. Shooting three, shooting three, uh, out, out, uh, out from the bench. Né? Not starter, but uh, out from from the bench. Uh, can be interesting uh, from Knicks or, or another team. Nah. But starter, your defense, it's horrible, horrible uh, defense, but uh, can be so, so, so much uh, important uh, in offense, nah, in attack for, uh, from Knicks. Man, do, do you remember in the last season, uh, Fournier, né? Uh, make it uh, so many points, né? <laughs> With Boston Celtics, né? Yeah. Ex well, uh, only versus teams that he played, right? For <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, Fournier. But, yeah. Oh, Fournier yeah. saw this, this interview. Fournier, imagine it. all teams is Boston Celtics. Yeah, okay? I was gonna say that they need <laughs> these glasses, you know, that he sees only green, so <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, but, but Victor, I, I want to... yeah, be, yeah before we go to RJ, uh, uh there's a couple of words on Fournier. Um no, okay. I really think that uh people envision Evan Fournier totally 
in the bad light because you said like you know he's terrible on defense his you know steals and blocks per game are better than rj barrett's and i'm not saying that by any mean don't you know Knicks fans brazil don't hate me for this <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying that the numbers show one thing and you know the eye test when you watch the games might show something else but what we gotta realize is we don't know the tactics that tom thibodeau wants the knicks to play we know mm -hmm. that he plays team defense and listen when you watch the games and even when you go rewatch the games the first steal of the game for the Knicks was almost every game Evan Fournier because the, the opposite team didn't know what kind of defense are we going to play. And R.J. Barrett was put on the best scorer, but Evan mm. Fournier was leaving his guy so he can cut the passing lane and get the steal. And, you know, I think that was a scheme that was told in the locker room. Listen, Fournier, you can leave your man a little bit, but try to get that steal. That's why he looks really bad on defense one on one. But in team defense, he helps, you know, around a lot. And for me, the most important thing, we knew who Evan Fournier is when we signed him. We knew that no, he's not I, the perfect defender. So why we are thinking now that he's going to be better than RJ Barrett or better than, you know, Frank Nilikino, whoever, we know that he's mm -hmm. a bad defender, right? So yes. I don't know why we think that he's going to be suddenly overnight, you know, a good defender. <laughs> I knew that he's a bad defender, so I don't expect him to be, you know, the best defender on the Knicks. And, you know, shooting wise, shooting cool. But I really think that Evan Fournier and when you watch French national team games, when he plays with Rudy Gobert, he knows how to play the pick and roll perfectly. We just didn't put him in the pick and roll with Mitch Robinson. We, you know, the first, uh, if you go back and I told this like game three or four in the season, he was the first man to pass the ball in the paint for Mitchell Robinson to like have to make that, you know, turn around and dunk instead of just mm -hmm. the alley-oop. He was the first Nick that passed Mitch Robinson the ball to try to make a post move. You know, he, mm -hmm. you know, Mitchell Robinson's skill set, totally different than, than, you know, than what fournier expected but he was the first teammate that said go ahead mitch try to score you know make one and try to move he doesn't do that but fournier was the first player that trusted mitchell robinson with that and i think that's really also important that tom thibodeau didn't use evan fournier perfectly the other thing is mm -hmm. that evan fournier in orlando played with a center like nikola vucevic totally different player he can score from three he can got a ton of post moves so he knows how to play with big man we just don't use him because we had alec burks at the point guard rg barrett plays with the ball julius randall plays with the ball so evan fournier has like what 10 12 you know possessions a game that he can try to do so first he's going to try to score himself and then he starts to create for someone else so for me i think we could use fournier way better so he could mm -hmm. score more, pass more, and stuff like that. And listen, on the defense, I knew Evan Fournier uh, ain't you know Tony Allen or Marcus Smart. So so I wasn't shocked that that <laughs> that you know he, he's not great on defense. <laughs> no, uh, I I respect your your point. You you right you right. Uh, uh, I I I I agree with you. Yeah, oh, Victor, uh, and one more thing. Uh, the the other thing is. What, what fans don't think, and, and I realize this, that Fournier's bad defensive games, like bad that he sees a guy going, but he's like, he's not going to help even. Uh, uh -huh. Those those games were, were where Julius Randle had that bad body language. He didn't help. And Fournier is, he's an older player, right? So he's not mm -hmm. going to be, I ain't going to work for all four of you teammates. Mm -hmm. If you ain't playing defense, I'm just not, I'm not going to play defense myself. So he was like, go ahead. If everybody would play defense, he would be playing defense too. But he's not, you know, that, that rookie that has to play whatever, you know, the coaches says or, or whoever says. He's older than that and he's not going to be like, you know, when, when you don't play defense, I'm just not going to play defense for you and just pass you the ball so you can shoot. So uh, I think also what fans didn't realize that, that Fournier, those worst defensive games, where when Julius Randle didn't, you know, play defense, R.G. Barrett, like, you know, left his guy here and there, quickly left his guy here and there for position. He was like, 
we're not engaged as a team so i'm not going to do it myself so the, i think See, that yeah. that's also the case no uh, i agree with you i agree uh, for me né uh, tom, uh, tom chimbo though uh, can be used né fournier and yeah. uh, another another situations in my yeah. opinion né fournier it's a good player really i i think i think uh, i think he, about this player uh, it's a good player but uh in nba uh i i think um fournier will be better from the knicks for example yeah, out from the role. bench yeah ah, uh man uh fournier out from the bench uh, fi uh on fire in this in, in these games nah, making three points nah, uh Make, yeah, like like uh, a like a Lou Williams, right? That he comes off yes. the bench, he has one, two, three yes. shots. If he makes them, you keep him on the court. If no, go to the bench and see you next game. Yes. So yes. yeah, yeah, I understand. I I envision quickly like that because quickly uh -huh. he can handle the ball. He can like bring up the ball. So with quickly on the court, when you want your players to rest, you can throw in Sims and and you know the worst players on the team. Because he can mm -hmm. go one on one on one versus whoever and take that shot. He he doesn't fear if he doesn't make the shot. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna still take the shot next possession. So he he doesn't have any you know uh, anything holding him back. So I really think that I rather see quickly like that, and that's why I don't want quickly in the starting lineup. Not like not like because I'm hate him or, or stuff like that. I hate his shot selection. Because if I would be playing with quickly and I would be open in the corner and he would be taking a shot, you know, or in the paint and getting fouled, I would be, bro, just pass me the ball. <laughs> I'm going to try to shoot. <laughs> so so that, that's why I, I only hit quickly a little bit. But but I think he, he can make progress in, you know, the shot selection. And, and, and I think he's going to do it because, you know, the longer you play, I think the more players are going to point those things out for you if if you know don't shoot that much just you know i was open i was open i was open so he's gonna pass from the statistics numbers we see that he can pass last year's in the in the you know in the summer league he was playing great at point guard you know sometimes he plays great at point guard you know with the second uh you know unit Th that that's also good you know they're just you know mostly he, his assists are like you know if he really can't make a shot or doesn't want to take a shot he passes the ball and i would rather him for you know try to be that pass force point guard but that's only you know my basketball philosophy you know that that my point guard or rather him he to be a floor general pass first and then score quickly is like i'm gonna score i'm gonna score floor general pass the ball <laughs> <laughs> but man uh i i like in, in emmanuel Kikley. Uh, yeah. He tried, he tried, and so many games. And I, I, do you remember uh, a game? Uh, so many uh, Knicks players pass the ball, pass the yeah. ball, pass the ball. They don't want to shoot. They don't want to shoot. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you remember, man? Yeah. I, yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. one game. Uh, uh, four, four players pass the ball. No one. Yeah. No one. And and uh, listen, in those games, even RJ and even Randall didn't want to make a shot. So uh -huh. that was interesting for me because I think like like I think that Thibodeau yells at each and every play. Whoever dribbles mm -hmm. the ball, Thibodeau yells what to do. And sometimes Thibodeau yells and quickly just okay, you talk to the hand. I'm gonna do my stuff. So so I think you know, and sometimes that that is really needed. Because smart NBA players on defense, like listen, like Kobe Bryant, like you know, even Marcus Smart, they tell in interviews that you know they listen to what the coaches say and they read, like, okay, this play means he's gonna go left, he's gonna go left. So the third time, he knows that he's gonna go left. So if the player doesn't see that and doesn't adjust, it's a, it's a it's a you know uh turnover. So mm -hmm. that's why you know you have to sometimes have a guy that can, you know. Listen to the coach. Know what the coaches want to do, but he's going to do a totally different thing. So, so you know, he's going to adjust in game instead of the coach's decision to adjust in game. Andy, uh, I just want to see more. The last shoot with Randall. Yeah. I just 
want see the last ball, the last shot with Julius Randle. Man, Julius Randle, take the ball. A uh, yeah. few seconds, man. But but Victor, I, I, I close my eyes. I close Victor, my eyes. I, I'm gonna ask you a question, and I bet you're gonna say that Julius Randle <laughs> is better in that. Remember uh, first year when Julius Randle pounded the ball and do, did that spin move into someone, into the like two guys in the paint, and he spinned straight up into those two guys. He doesn't do these spin moves last year, and the, in the previous year, the first year he was with the Knicks, he was doing those spin moves, and I know here in Poland that he's gonna do the spin move that way uh -huh. and the defenders in the end be like oh he's gonna do the spin move i'm gonna move this way and they were waiting for them for him in the spin move and it was an offensive foul or a bad pass or a turnover and i was like don't do the spin move don't do the spin move <laughs> and he did the spin move but last season he didn't do that so so that's an adjustment for julius randall <laughs> <laughs> and rj barrett andy uh i want your opinion uh do you believe RJ Barrett can be a future all-star or not? <laughs> I needed to drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, Victor, for me, and I again... Don't uh, worry, gonna, okay? Don't worry. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to say that I hope Knicks fans in Brazil are not going to hate me, but for me... RJ Barrett is a good player. He can be a great player. If he is going to be an all-star, I think it's not only depending on him because we have so many good players on the wing in the Eastern Conference that only mm -hmm. by that might be really hard for him to get. We know that the you know starting lineup is decided by the fans, but I don't think mm -hmm. Knicks fans can vote him in the starting lineup for the all-star game. <laughs> that would be insane for me. But, you know, it can happen yeah. theoretically, right? Um, yes. And, and listen, for me, I think, uh, and again, I'm going to say, I hope Knicks uh, fans are not going to hate me for this. I think RJ Barrett is, um, he's not that talented. His basketball is, you see that he works really, really plenty much of time on his game, but uh -huh. you don't see that you know, free flow, like even Cam Reddish, when you see Cam Reddish dribbling the ball off the court, he, you, you you don't know what he's going to do, but he's going to come up with a move, whatever he's going to do, and he's going to try, uh, try to score. Meanwhile, when mm -hmm. RJ Barrett does that, you can read his body that he's going to pound the ball really hard and try to get into the paint. Like he doesn't have that easiness, that cleanness, that fluid fluidity in his game that other players have but he has that work ethic and sometimes uh -huh. that work ethic is more important than the talent you know we had a polish player Marcin gortat uh, the the center that played for the Suns, for the clippers for the wizards listen for the magic listen he was uh, i called him a lumberjack he was like i'm gonna uh -huh. cut this i'm gonna you know fight i'm gonna do only this he had like 12 or 13 seasons in the nba he had a great career, made plenty of money. He had zero talent. He was just a big man, worked in the gym. They told him to train free throws. He trained free throws, told him to rebound. He rebounded. He was, a, you know, like a robot, robot right? He Whatever you uh -huh. say, he's going to do it. And I think R.J. Barrett, he's trying to do those things and learn. But you see that it's not like, you know, some players are just, you know, so talented. that they, they like Luca. He comes up, with, he's going to dribble, dribble, and he's going to like, okay, I'm going to yes. do this. And he does it. And R.J. Barrett, when he dribbles, you know that he's going to do this or this. It's not like 10 options. It's like one, two, nothing more. And, you know, he can evolve in that aspect. But I think, you know, and it's not going to knock on R.J. Because, you know, and with talent, you either have it or you don't have it or you're born with it or, you know, skill set, you can develop talent you have it or you don't have it and i think rj's talent is a little bit small but his work ethic you know and heart goes way you know bigger than than the rest of the nba players so i think you know uh, and also appearances is like i said it depends on the eastern conference because for example if the boston celtics have you know jalen brown and jason tatum you know the, mm -hmm. the, the other teams have so many good wings it's going to be really hard for rj barrett to get into that all-star all-star game but for me 
if he's going to be even a second option or, 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 or a third option. You know, for me, it's the team. I don't care about the name. You know, for me, it's the team. But if if the Knicks would be like top four in the Eastern Conference when the you know the All Star game is played, I think we we have a shot at two All Stars if we get number four at the All Star break. That would be. I'm not expecting that. That is a dream for me. But uh-huh. but but that would be that would be that would be a chance for for Knicks to have two All Star players. Oh no! I am sad now. Wait, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, man. I I I I respect the, your point. Don't don't yeah. worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, in Brazil, listen, uh, in Brazil, I, just, I, I just, have friends uh, uh, thinking uh, uh, like you, like me. Yeah. So uh, like uh, yeah. So don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Listen, it just looks for, for me. It just looks like that. But maybe that's because you know. Listen, I, I'm from Europe. And I, I see like Doncic, I see Jokic. Yes. Listen, Jokic looks like he, he goes to, you know, a factory, he works and then he goes to, to an NBA game. He makes, he does those shots and you're like, how did that fall in the hoop? Did, did you see, um, I, I was watching because, you know, I'm in Europe here. I, I watched the uh, Greece versus Serbia game and it was Giannis versus Jokic. It went mm-hmm. to overtime. The shots that, Nikola Jokic made in that game. I was like, that can't fall. He has an angel, takes the ball and throws it in the hoop like an alley oop. It's unbelievable the shots that he makes. And it's like you can't defend that because you don't know. He he looks like you don't even know what the move is gonna be. He he comes up with it, he falls back, whatever, he throws the ball and it it goes to the hoop. Uh, it's it's so crazy with Nikola Jokic, and I think that is more talent because he doesn't work on his body. He's like fat, even you know. Uh, the, the, the the best memes on on from the Nuggets page is like they show Nikola Jokic all dancing on the wedding, you know, having a drink, and and says us, "This is the guy that's gonna come to the NBA and win MVP the third season again." Uh-huh. <laughs> so, you know, meanwhile, you know, Julius Randle is, you know, you know, pushing the chains and, and you know, everything. And this guy is yes. drinking and, you know, riding horses and he's going to come into the NBA and win an MVP again. So, you know, that, that's <laughs> talent for me instead of hard work. But, you know, that that's, you know, also limited and have, you know, short, shorter careers, but probably. But, but listen, that's talent for me. Man, uh, you told me about... Uh players uh, from Europe uh, do you do you see uh, against uh, from Roca Jucabites in Barcelona or oh, not yeah uh, because uh, Zach Brasiler from New York Post uh, talking so many good things about this player né? and the Knicks uh, is the the radar the radar radar for, yeah. forgive my my English Yeah, uh, yeah. Knicks uh, has a, a, a prefer né hookah bites uh, playing one one more year in Barcelona, né? Uh, but so many people talking with me and saying uh, hookahs playing so well. Uh, your opinion? Uh, your uh, what's your opinion <laughs> about hookahs? Uh, yeah, Victor. So. Um... This is a really funny topic because I watch all Barcelona games and I saw really? Rocas. Yeah, I, I watch <laughs> them because great. listen, they're, they're, like there's an NBA league pass, there's also a Euro league pass, and the rest of uh-huh. the ACB games I have in TV, great. so I can watch uh-huh. all Barcelona games, right? Whoa. And I even watch now the Lithuania games, but he was injured, so he didn't play in, in these last couple of games. He only practiced, uh-huh. and I think the last game he played, but it was like only a couple of minutes and he didn't show uh, much. So uh, the, the most funny thing, I made a report on, on Rokas Jokubaitis and I said that, no, I said that I compare him. If I would have to find a player in the NBA that reminds me of Rokas Jokubaitis, it would be Goran Dragic. Oh. You remember the one that played for the Heat, yes. the point guard. Slow, savvy, nothing athletic, but can take that shot, can create in a pick and roll, really intelligent player plays great defense but also like Fournier team defense because he's mm-hmm. too slow for the athletic american players 
So mm -hmm. we have to take that into account. Uh, in Europe, he looks great on defense because he picks up full court and stuff like that. But he knows that those players are not going to go around him and dunk on someone and, and play four, five on five, five on four and stuff like that. So in Europe, he can he can play a little bit different on the defensive end. And um, the funny thing is that, you know, I said that I see Rocas, you know, because I, because the, the fans were asking on NBK that if Rocas is going to come next season. And I said, listen, for me, he is still not NBA ready. I think that he needs like two more years in the, you know, Spanish league with Barcelona. And then he can come to the NBA. And, and why with Barcelona? Because he had a perfect mentor, Nick Caletas, the, the veteran Greece point guard that was playing ahead of Rocas. A perfect player, old dude, veteran, mentor, and stuff like that. Perfect guy. He was even drafted to the NBA. I, I'm not sure if he played a season in the NBA, but but maybe in with Memphis, I think. But uh, he plays really smart, and he and you see Rokas doing the same plays, and you see it. It's not like he does the same plays because the coaches, you know, draw uh -huh. it up like that. But he learned that because you know coaches draw it up to pass it downstairs. He does it upstairs and stuff like that. But he knows where the passing lanes are open. So you can really see that uh, that he's intelligent, right? The funny thing that, uh, like I said before, I think that he will come in two years. One week from that thing that I did on NBK, Rokas Jokobaitis does an interview and he says that he's not coming into the NBA for at least two more seasons. And I was like, he watched the, <laughs> he watched the show. He said what I think. And, and you know, that, that was funny for me. But listen, Victor. For me, Rokas Ekobaitis is not going to be a starting point guard for the Knicks, never ever, because he is too slow. He was too. He's methodical, and he is too slow for the NBA. If it was the era with Patrick Ewing, when you mm -hmm. know dribble, 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 pass the ball to the big man, perfect yes. player. Take him instead of Ron Harper uh, and those guys. Take him. Perfect, uh -huh. but yeah, but 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 in this NBA, when you play versus John ja Morant and stuff like that, he can't defend those guys. So that would be really really bad, and and yeah, and that's the case with Rokas. I I observe him, I watch him in the Lithuanian national team, which he plays with Valanciunas, Sabonis, uh, Kuzminskis, and, and those guys. Great. The, these European national teams, it, I, I encourage Knicks fans to watch European basketball. There's mm -hmm. so many good teams in Europe to watch. And, you know, I you can, can imagine. Yeah. Sometimes you watch NBA basketball and you think this is the best league. I don't need to watch anything else. If you guys would watch EuroLeague, you would fell, fall in love with the basketball game even more. It's like the Knicks 90s games. They foul. You know what the play is going to be, but you're not going to score the hoop. That's why games, you know, are like 77 to 83. You know, it's not like 120. I don't think last season there was like maybe three, four games that one team scored 100. It's really, really always less points because of the defense, the fouls. You can hand check and stuff like that. The, the rules are a little bit different, but, you know, it, it's a totally different game in the in Europe and in the in, in FIBA and national games. So it, it's a good experience. I encourage you, you guys in Brazil to watch a couple of these games in Europe. Man, I, I like so much the fans. <laughs> I like so much, man. I like, uh, sorry. Uh, look like soccer, bro. Fans, yeah, fans from soccer. Whoa, yeah, I like so much. NBA people so calm, uh, people quiet. Man, in Europe, whoa, yeah, fans Victor. like football, like yeah. soccer, bro. Yeah, so listen, soccer here, I think around Europe, it's it's way more, you know, like like, like in Brazil, you know, soccer yes. is like the first, first, you know, Levin everything Dovsky. else. <laughs> yeah yeah everything else is like you know volleyball whatever and then it's basketball like you know fifth sixth place whatever right but mm -hmm. I, i'm gonna tell you a funny story uh i was uh what today is saturday right so i was mm -hmm. thursday on a game poland national team was playing with croatia uh and i wanted a game i went to warsaw it's like you know three and a half hours drive 
I took two, two of my friends. We went to the basketball game. And I'm going to do this, you know, episode on NBK probably tomorrow. I met Mario Hezonia and I had a 40 minute talk with Mario Hezonia Whoa. with Ivica Zubac from the Clippers because they played on the national team of Croatia. And it, it was such a funny story, but you know, you're going to probably watch that <laughs> in an episode. And you know, um, uh, why I said that, listen, the, the, because you said the fans are funny, right? When, mm. uh, well, before the game started, like the DJ, the, I don't know if you call it the DJ, the, the guy that hypes up the, you know, the fans, right? He uh -huh. said that if a Croatian player is fouled and goes to the line for two free throws and he misses the first one, we all, you know, sing uh, that song. It's like, one more time, you know. <laughs> And, and he, he Zubac missed the first free throw and the guy plays the music one more time. <laughs> I was laughing so hard and I even recorded it because they did it every time a Croatian player missed a free throw. They played that song. I recorded it because it was so funny. So and funny, Zubac bro. was like, he was like, you know, <laughs> asking what the DJ is doing here. You know, you can't do it in the NBA even. Like, that was a troll job. You know, like, he was, like, trolling the, <laughs> the Croatian players. So uh, I was laughing so hard at that game. So so it was awesome experience. No, so funny, bro. So funny. <laughs> yeah. Man, now I want to talk, man, the biggest, the biggest rumor from this off season from the Knicks okay let's go Spider-Man 4 coming to the Knicks the new movie Marvel new Miles Morales <laughs> do you believe it? Uh, spider <laughs> uh, become a leak what do you think, né? What do you think about this the biggest rumor? Well, Victor, I, I'm gonna say this. For me, I think it's like 75% that he's gonna start the season game one, 25% that we trade for him uh, before the deadline. Mm -hmm. And I think he's a Nick, you know, next year at this moment, he's a Nick. That that you know, that's not even a discussion. But I think you no know, question is. You know, the last reports were like that the Jazz want to deal do the deal before the trade uh, training camp begins. And I think that's a really good thing because I think they need to tank. The Jazz need to tank mm. really bad. They really bad need to tank. So even a couple of games of Donovan Mitchell might get them one, two wins too much. So I think that's that's really important for them to tank. And, you know, the, the question is, What's going to be the trade package? Uh, I said mm -hmm. at the beginning, we, again, with Josh, Uncle Fool, you're from NBK. We did a show, uh, and I think Tony Crone were, was with us, and we were making trade packages for, for Donovan Mitchell. And for me, the fair price for Donovan Mitchell is Evan Fournier, which I love, but he has to go. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so I love him so much he has to go <laughs> so uh, yeah but, but that's basically because of money right so uh, Evan uh, Ford cap space you know, etc yeah cap space exactly so he has to go uh, for me I would hate to lose Quentin Grimes quickly or Obi Toppin so I'm gonna put Cam Reddish into that deal because I don't know what Cam Reddish can be the Atlanta Hawks gave us Cam Reddish for Kevin Knox, which is nothing, and a first-round pick. I understand the first-round pick. Let's give Cam. Let's give Cam Reddish, you know, with Evan Fournier. If mm -hmm. I have to give one more player just to make the salaries, because I'm not sure about the, you know, the numbers. If I have to do a minimum contract there, Deuce McBride has to go because he has the smallest mm -hmm. money contract. So, so too bad, Deuce. You know, I'm a fan of his, but, but you know, he has to go. Uh, so that would be three players. And now the picks. And the for me, picks. the picks, yeah, the picks is the, the biggest question because Danny Ainge Protect. wants, you know, 15 picks. He can't have 15 picks because there's rules in the NBA. The rules in the NBA, the Stepien rule uh, says that you can only trade picks 
for the next eight seasons, but you can't trade first round picks each and every year. You have to have a pick if you're going to trade, you know, 23, 25, 27, 28, 29 or 24, 26, 28, 30. Right. So mm-hmm. and that's unprotected picks. We yes. have a couple of more picks. So mm-hmm. we got additional picks from the Pistons and from the Wizards, for example, from the Mavs. So we could throw in those picks because the Mavs pick is going to be a late first round pick because they're going to make the playoffs in the Western Conference. So it's going to be like 20, 25th pick, right? So yes. I can, I'm willing to trade all of those picks. The Detroit pick, I don't know, Victor, if you know the protections of that pick. That pick is so bad that I don't even consider that a first round pick. Mm-hmm. It's protected in the 23 year, like top 18. So th- that means the Pistons would have to make the playoffs and advance to the second round for us to get that pick. And then it's going to be like 20th pick. So Mm -hmm. that's a useless pick. In the next season, it's again like top 16. That means they have to just get into the playoffs for us to get that pick. The next season, it's like it's like barely lottery pick. So the lottery, it stays with the the, the Pistons. If not, it's the Knicks. And if those Mm -hmm. three years we don't get that pick, it becomes a second year pick, second round mm-hmm. pick. So that pick is, you know, it's called a first round pick, but we're never going to get it probably because they're always going to get the pick, the pick Detroit is going to have because they have protections on that pick. So that's mm-hmm. why I understand why Danny Ainge doesn't want that pick. Yeah, he's a <laughs> so, smart guy. Yeah. Yeah, he you know, you don't have to be a Sherlock Holmes to know that. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, and listen, the the Wizards pick, the Wizards pick is uh it's not that heavily protected, but it also has protection. So, if I'm Danny Ainge and I'm rebuilding the team, I'm trying to trade all players for maximum amount of picks and I, with those picks, I'm looking for a franchise player and then from that franchise player i'm starting to build the team around him even if he would want to trade for rj barrett i don't think rj barrett is that number one guy on a championship team that's why he Mm -hmm. doesn't want rj barrett because he's gonna have to pay him next season because the contract extension that's why he doesn't want rj barrett really and you know sometimes the reports are like i want rj barrett He's just doing that because he wants the next day. We're not giving you RG Barrett. We're going to give you quickly and Quinton Grimes. But then, you know, Leon Rose isn't that stupid. So he's not going to do that. And and for me, that's really important uh, that, you know, except Fournier, Cam Reddish, and, and except Deuce McBride to make the money work, I really think that um, Leon Rose is going to give like two unprotected Knicks picks and it's going to be low picks because if the Knicks get Donovan Mitchell keeping RJ Barrett, Brunson, Julius Randle and Mitch Robinson and the bench like all young players we're going to make the playoffs probably and that pick is going to be like you know 19 whatever 18 so it's not going to be that much you know of a of a you know bad thing the other thing is I don't want Leon Rose to send quickly grimes ob topping uh you know and picks because if someone wants to trade with you he's gonna ask for a player imagine you trying to find a shooting guard because you trade quinton grimes right you want to find a shooting guard but only thing you have to trade is like 2030 first round pick who is gonna Mm -hmm. trade with you if he's gonna get a pick in six or seven years nobody's gonna do that if you want to trade for a veteran i don't know um whatever veteran shooting guard you you that can upgrade your team it's easier to trade quinton grimes for him than that mm-hmm. 2030 first round pick and that's my case so you know i rather give more first round picks than give any of these young players because one i know what these players can do I hope that Tibbs is going to use them more next seasons because it's going to be like season two, season three for some of these guys. So I think, you know, Tibbs is going to use them more and rely on them more 
because he developed these guys for the last two seasons. So he knows what they can do instead of that pick in five years that you don't know even what's that the pick going to be and what kind of players. Listen, the funniest thing is, and I said it on NBK also, someone is going to say, uh, like, I think it was, uh, who's Mark? You probably saw him on NBK shows. He says that I don't want to trade that 2027 pick. Victor, 2027 that year imagine that the guy is gonna have what 19 years when he's drafted and that's in uh five years that meaning we are talking about a kid in united states that is 14 years old today when we have this interview so how can you you know predict what's going to be the pick in 2027 when the kid is 14 years old in the united states now probably that's that's crazy for me not trading that pick I rather trade the pick than I lose Quinton Grimes or Emmanuel quickly or Obi Topping, right? Listen, if Obi Topping has to go, I bet you that Carmelo Anthony is just waiting for the Knicks to, to make minutes at, at the power forward position. So if Obi goes, yeah. Carmelo Anthony is the next day he's an MSG. So <laughs> uh, uh today I I saw uh yeah post. that he's interested in yeah. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I knew that like two months ago that he's probably <laughs> just waiting for the dominoes to fall. And listen, I'm just going to call Leon and say, listen, I'm already in New York so I can sign with you guys for the veteran minimum. So, Andy, uh, uh, Donovan Mitchell and uh, Carmelo Anthony uh, coming to the Knicks, for example, uh, can be interesting uh, around the world uh, bec uh, because uh, Knicks uh, in Brazil, for example, it's complicated talk, talk, talks about the Knicks because the Knicks did not have a contender so long years. Nah? Yeah. And the people in Brazil now like so much Golden State Warriors nah? and another teams. Nah? Uh, it's complicated. So uh, when uh, began uh, these, these rumors, uh, people in Brazil, so many channels, nah? uh starts now nah, talking about the knicks now nah. so um for me it's, it's very important uh donovan mitchell become a nick uh in marketing nah, and and another stars nah, uh in nba can be nah, uh look more uh from the knicks nah. And Carmelo Anthony in Brazil, the last generation, né? Uh, become a Nick uh, with Carmelo Anthony, né? And so, two guys, né? Uh, and listen, Carmelo Martin. Anthony played with Nene, right? So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard that yes. Nene said bad words about Carmelo, but. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, Carmelo will be more important. Uh, uh, in marketing uh, uh, between uh, playing with this team marketing uh, for me is more important uh, Carmelo Anthony uh, then Taj Gibson man yeah uh, mm, yeah bo both from New York right but you know Taj Gibson isn't Carmelo Anthony I, so <laughs> no, yeah I like so much uh, Taj Gibson Taj Gibson I yeah. want to drink a beer uh nah. <laughs> so yeah. so great guy I, I like so much Tash gibson uh but uh carmelo anthony bro carmelo anthony yeah. Uh, yeah, Victor, for, fans for, loves carmelo anthony. yeah for, for 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 me i think it's uh plenty of knicks fans love carmelo anthony for what he did for the knicks he came here when you know studmeyer was here and stuff like that you know some fans are going to blame him that you know we had to give four starters in that trade and stuff like that but for me that wasn't the case because we gave up starters but it was the you know the next trades the bargiani trade the, you know the other players that we traded to make the team better around carmel anthony and we make it worse so mm -hmm. I'm not blaming Carmelo for wanting to become the Knicks because all oh, Knicks fans were like, oh, he should have waited to the offseason and then signed with the Knicks. You know, that was a lockout year. So nobody's going to raise that much money, even if you're Carmelo Anthony and you're married to Lala, right? You're not going to raise that much money. And I understand that. For me, 
just basketball wise i think carmelo anthony is in his career and in a in a situation in his career that he wouldn't be you know like in okc when he you know he did the interview and he's like yo p did you hear me uh they're telling you about me about coming off the bench you know uh -huh. i think he's in a situation now that he knows when he is signed he's going to be coming off the bench and he knows mm -hmm. the role and i think you no know, off the court he's a perfect player to to make these guys know the nba you know stuff like that because he wasn't in the league for a year or two before he signed with the Porsche and Trailblazers, right? So he knows mm -hmm. it from the glory times and from the worst times. So he can teach these next players what can happen if you make a bad decision off the court or stuff like that, or even on the court. He can he has an offensive, you know, repertoire. You know, he has an offensive prowess that he has so many offensive moves that that listen, it's it's crazy to think that, but he's a better offensive player than LeBron James. Because you know, if you take out LeBron James with a knee injury, he's not gonna be LeBron James never ever. When you take Carmelo's Anthony knee, he's gonna come back and he's do everything that he did today. Maybe without dunking, but he can do. You no, know, he can make this. You know the 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 space with with this with the jab step. He can take the shot. He can take the three. He can go around you. He he has a perfect offensive game. If he could concentrate and think about defense, that would be perfect. I think Tibbs is gonna do that because you know I don't think he would have a problem with that. And with so many good players, I'm not saying that they would go for the championship or nothing like that. But this mm -hmm. is going to be probably one of the last seasons Carmelo Anthony has. So I think he would want to go out on a high note and try to be remembered as a great player. Maybe even got his jersey retired as a Nick. That's why mm -hmm. I think it's really possible uh, for polemical. Carmelo Anthony. Yeah. It's polemical. <laughs> yeah. So polemical. I think it's really possible to see Carmelo Anthony next season, you know, in next jersey. And I hope he wears number seven because I already have that jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, and Andy, uh, the last question. Um, what's your uh, expectations uh, in, in two formats, okay? Two formats. The first... Um, Knicks with né, Donovan Mitchell in this team, okay? And the second, without Donovan Mitchell. What's your expectations in, in two formats? Yeah, so listen, with Donovan Mitchell, it also you know depends who we give away. Let's say we give away Fournier, Picks, Cam Reddish, right? And even Deuce McBride. You know, he's not that big of a rotation player for Tibbs. So if we trade those players, I don't care amount of picks for Donovan Mitchell. I think the Knicks, if everything goes perfect, nobody gets injured and stuff like that, we are going to be top six. And top six really important because we don't have that play in, you know, thing because it's one game or two games and you're out so I'd rather mm -hmm. than be top six it might be really hard because victor if you think about it we still might be the worst team in the atlantic division mm -hmm. celtics 76ers raptors and nets they all can be better than us and the rules but are the nets never yeah the nets they're, they're a dumpster be. fire i hope that the dumpster fire they're, they're not gonna you know <laughs> ben simmons is not gonna play because you know kd didn't answer a text uh kyrie is gonna you know smoke something in the in the next locker yes. room and then they're gonna crazy you know, guys yeah exactly so <laughs> I, I hope that's gonna happen oh that that would be a prayer for me <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, uh this week I talked with uh, George from Into the Knicks Verse, and uh, <laughs> I told for for George from George uh, the curse. I I tell the curse from the Brooklyn yeah. Nets. Yeah, never I hope so too. Be never be my curse from the Nets. Okay. Yeah. Do, yeah, do, I you, hope you, you I remember hope it's gonna me. I hope it's going to work. I hope it's going to work. You remember me too in the future. Yeah. 
my curse from the nets <laughs> yeah so so yeah so victor uh that, that would be one case i think with donovan mitchell and if everything goes fine i think we're we might be top six um mm-hmm. if we don't get donovan mitchell i think we're going to be a playing team i don't think we can manage to be the top six because the east is really really hard you know mm-hmm. some teams are clearly gonna you know tank you know, like the, I think even the Pacers, the Pacers are going to tank. The Magic still yeah. are going to tank. They might win, you know, a couple of games more. But, you know, after the trade deadline, they're going to be like, okay, we're going to tank. You know, they're going to sit all those best players, those Halliburton's, Boncheros. They're going to sit all those guys and, and it's going to be, you know, a really bad game. And uh, I don't know about the Pistons. The Pistons signed this guy, signed that guy. They, they drafted a rookie. Kate Cunningham is going to have a second year. I still think they don't have that much to be competing for the play-ins. No, you never know about uh, the you never know about the the Wizards because they're a weird team. I don't know which where they're going. You know, Kristaps Porzingis. You know, once a Nick, always a Nick played great in Euro. You know, games with Latvia. Wow, well, if you saw the highlights, he was he has a beard now. So. Listen, I don't know if that that's that's that beard or or something, but he's playing great here in Europe. Um, so I, I'm not sure about the Wizards. Uh, I'm not sure about the Raptors. Actually, I, I said that the Knicks might be even worse about the Raptors. I don't like uh, play with the Raptors. Yeah, the Raptors are really like. bad. The, yeah, and listen, and, and the Raptors are they're a funny team because they play in Toronto this year and. Canada still holds those COVID restrictions. So if if you know some players are not, you know, vaccinated and stuff, they won't be able to play in Toronto. Like mm-hmm. Kyrie Irving, he still will be able to won't be able to play in Toronto. There's plenty of player, you know, there's plenty, maybe like 12, 18, whatever players. But he if mm-hmm. he's a good player on your team, he won't be playing in Toronto. So that's one game minus, two game of minus. And you know, sometimes those three, four games are gonna be huge for Toronto in the win column, right? So no, that that's a that, that's a sticky situation for me. Uh, that's why I say, you know, without Donovan Mitchell, with these guys that we keep here, I think we might be um, we might be a, a playing team. I'm not expecting much more, but I'm also a person in real life. I don't have high expectations. I rather be surprised, you know, and happy than I'm gonna say we're gonna have 60 wins and we're gonna have 40 wins and I'm gonna be like oh again again and again. <laughs> So, you know, I hope they're going to be play the best games possible and, and win as much as possible. Like uh, ever, ever I said in the in this channel, I just want Nick's great again, bro. Yeah, just just it. Just it. I miss so I miss né, so much the uh, the Nick's great, bro. Man, nine years. Yeah. 19 years. Meu. My <laughs> God. My God. Patrick Ewing, Joy Stark, Charles Oakley, Alan Houston, Larry Johnson. Man. Man. Yeah. Uh, no, those were times. Nick, uh, Nick, <laughs> fa- Nick fans, this, this generation, deserve uh, a great team. Like he, I, I, I saw, you saw in the past. That's Man, true. Uh, Knicks, uh, uh, Michael Jordan feared the Knicks so many times. <laughs> Knicks uh, 2-0 in playoffs. Michael Jordan, uh, New York, <laughs> troll, troll, yeah. troll. Uh, Michael Jordan, <sighs> fire, fire in your yeah. eyes, nah, blood in your eyes. And uh, <laughs> Knicks, uh, it's a great team, bro. Uh, and um, I believe so much. And, and two, two. Or three years will be a, a, a contender again. Two or three years. Yeah, uh, I, I hope so, Victor. Victor, I, I got a question for you. If, if we're on okay. the Knicks, you know, championship thing. Uh-huh. Would you rather have the Knicks win one championship and then be really bad again for 10 years or rather be really, really good for 10 years but never win a championship? Like every like 10 years, we're going to be Eastern Conference Finals. Or or even NBA finals, but we never win or win one time and then stink ten years again. 
Ah, não, não, 10 years again, no, no, bro, no, 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 10 years, no, no. But that will be one championship. No, no, I, I, I understand. Uh, I, 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 my age. Yeah. <laughs> Look, my age uh, can be interesting. So a title. <laughs> no, looking for my age, no. I, it can be interesting, but the future from this team. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That, that, so, I, I always uh, have a hard, you know, time to answer that question. It's like, you know, I, I'm 38, right? So I'm like, I'm not that old. But then again, you know, that championship, oh, I might live like 12 more years. So I maybe see it again, then be good right after that championship. <laughs> so. man, 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 18, eight years, for example, uh, out from playoffs, bro. In Brazil, people joking so much about the Knicks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I angry I angry about this. So, but I I understand that so one title <laughs> before I died. Yeah, that, that, that's my <laughs> like bucket list. If it only if I only could play for the Knicks, that would be my bucket list to get that one title for the Knicks, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, complicated, it's complicated, man. It's complicated. Uh, two sides, né? Uh, reasons, né? Different reasons. But well, I, I like so much. So, uh, see, yeah, see, you need to see, add. You not. You need see, to add everyone needs. this question. You need to ask everyone of your guests this question. <laughs> if they want <laughs> one championship, a ten years bad games, or 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 you know, ten years Eastern Conference and Finals appearances, and 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 no championship. Man, I, ch I I change the future later. <laughs> <laughs> you won't see the title. <laughs> uh, I talk. I, I will talk uh, uh, with Michael J. Fox, Nick fan. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. And, and Back to the Future, the, the movie. Uh, I change the future. Yeah, Nick's you, you great, yo, uh, Victor, you have great guests here. I don't know how you get them on the show, but you do great work, bro. Uh, oh, thanks so much. I, I you, uh, a, a great honor for me. Uh, like ah. I said the, in begin the, this interview, I saw you so much nah, in the interviews uh, with the channels from from New York. Uh, so a great honor for me too. Nah. Yeah, but uh, you know, I'm, the, I'm the first, nobody big. Oh. Nobody big. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, the first the first interview in your country with you. Oh. I might be the only fan in the Knicks here, so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope, I hope, really, really. I hope you enjoy nah, yeah, uh, th this interview. Yeah, I'm always smiling, Victor. I, I, when I can ever talk the Knicks, I'm, I'm always happy, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope, nah, make a, a new interview with you yeah. in the future, nah, with J Daniel Jan nah, from Knicks, Knicks Nation Germany. Uh, do you know Ob uh, Abdul uh, from Knicks Nation French? Uh, it's a, a co-host from Knicks Nation French. And there yeah. are other projects are around the world. Man, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, I, think uh, I know. I think I know Abdul too. Yeah, I definitely follow him on, on Twitter. So. Oh, great. Great. Oh, people, everybody <laughs> yeah. uh, know, knows. Uh, I make it, for example, Nick Bus. Do you know Nick Bus uh, from Australia, for example, yeah. of a uh, uh, channel from CT? Uh, so, uh, so in Nick's, nah, uh, from Spain. Uh, so many projects uh, around yeah. the, wor the world. I'm, uh, I'm happy. I'm happy that you know that it's growing so so fast and so big because it's so many people, so many points of views, so many interesting facts that you can you know know before you know the Knicks biggest media even know it right so so you know I, I remember Victor you know when when the Knicks were looking at um what was the guy that we signed from from Italy uh Nick that, that was, in the that past was with the box now yeah like like a year ago he was with the box playing on ah. Uh, ja, ja, Giacomo, no. Well, yeah, the, 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 the not Vincenzo, just uh, uh, Vildosa, Luca Vildosa. Luca Vildosa. Ah, Luca Vildosa from Victor, Argentina. I, I reported that the next scouts were at the game. 
two weeks later, the Knicks, you know, were looking to sign him and he was looking at another team three weeks, three weeks after he signed with the Knicks. So I was, I was, I broke that news for, for Knicks fans. And I remember that we did it on NBK and Mark Bourbon, you know, like watched us and the other day was, he was on the paper with it, with that news. So it was, it was so <laughs> funny for me, you know, because I know that these reporters watch the shows. It's not like they don't. They watch the shows, but you know they just pick the the you know the best information. They try to you know look it out if it's true, and, and they then then do it. So, so so you know it, it's funny that you know our work as content creators is also you know heading to the, the right way. No, and uh, so 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 many channels, so many projects, na uh, pages, na from from Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, so yeah. many groups uh, about the Knicks in Facebook. Uh, man, I, I love talking about the Knicks. And, yeah, uh, me too. <laughs> I hope nah, uh, the this interview with so many so many projects uh, uh, so many countries countries different different countries talking about the Knicks. It, it will be so so interesting yeah uh, definitely in the future i i will love making the this interview with you guys but oh thank you so much andy thank you so much uh man yeah. so happy so happy uh, the, victor you don't know I'm, I'm more happy and i'm more privileged to be with you i'm going to be around alan hall and bill pedo and, and those guys uh, <laughs> as uh, you know as a person you interviewed so i'm i'm really happy <laughs> oh man man <laughs> thanks so much thanks so much bro thanks so much Man, uh, I, uh, I, I want, nah, I, I will put nah, uh, your link uh, in description for Brazilians follow you in Twitter and uh, another social medias nah, from you. Yeah, you, you and, can uh, ask me questions. I'm going to try to use Google Translator to, you know, learn more Portuguese <laughs> and, and Brazilian. Uh, follow me on Nothing But Nicks on, on, on the Sims platform. I'm going to be having my, you know, playlist and, and do more shows with also international fans. I got a couple of things planned, but, you know, if, if you follow, you're going to see. Whoa. <laughs> Great, bro. Man, take care. Né? And uh, I hope to talk with you in the future, bro. Okay? Whenever you have time, questions, just, you know, DM me. I'm going to be happy to hop on. Ah, great. <laughs> great, bro. Great. Take care, bro. Peace. Bye, bye. E aí, pessoal? Este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever. Se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! I do, are you down with the orange and the blue? I'm a Nick fan.